We are exploring the world of ancient Egypt and looking at some of the biggest discoveries made in modern time. Welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And now I've been fascinated with ancient Egypt ever since I was a kid. And the more I get older, the more fascinated I become. So I'm really excited to do this episode. We're gonna be looking at 10 surprising discoveries of modern times that date back to ancient Egypt. Okay, so let's get into this one, starting with discovery number 10 the discovery of King Tut's tomb. This tomb was unearthed in 1922 by a team that was led by Howard Carter, and the tomb was filled with a lot of different treasures, including King Tut, or as he was known as King Tutankhamun's death mask, which today is very, very, very iconic. Google his name, and that's the first thing you see. Now, King Tut was known as the boy king, but he ended up dying in his teens. And the analysis that they did of his remains, it suggests that he actually suffered from a variety of different health problems and he used to actually walk around with a cane. He spent a lot of his time ruling Egypt between the years 1332 BC and 1323 BC, trying to really restore Egypt's traditional polytheistic religion. And this was something actually that was interrupted by his father, Akhenaten, who started to promote the supremacy of the Aten, which is the sun disk. And that religion, by the way, is actually known as Atenism. Next up, we have the Rosetta Stone. Very, very, very popular. This dates back to 196 BC. And this Rosetta Stone, it contains a decree that was written by a group of priests that mentions the right of Pharaoh Ptolemy V, who was 13 years old at the time, to rule Egypt. So the decree was written in three different languages. We have hieroglyph, then there is Demotic and Greek. Now, when the stone was discovered in the year 1799, only the Greek language was known, but because the Greek text it had the exact same decree as the other two languages, it really helped scientists and researchers to decipher those languages and what they had to say. And since nobody speaks those languages anymore, having the Greek language was really, really, really good in the interpretation of language like hieroglyphic. Oxyrhynchus papyri comes in at number eight. Yeah, kind of a weird word, but between the years 1896 and 1907, archaeologists Bernard Grenfell and Arthur Hunt discovered over 500,000 papyri fragments that date back around 1800 years. So this investigation, it found many different fragments in the ruins of Oxyrhynchus, which was a large ancient town in southern in Egypt that really began to flourish at the time when the Roman Empire actually controlled Egypt. Now, because of the conditions in the town, the papyri used by the residents were able to survive nearly two millennia. The papyri included Christian gospels as well as magic spells and also a wrestling match contract. As a matter of fact, one of these spells that was written on the papyri was meant to invoke the gods to burn the heart of a woman until she fell in love with the person that casted the spell. This, by the way, was according to Franco Maltomini of the University of Udine in Italy. Next up at number seven, we have the Khufu ship. This ship is a discovery of ancient Egypt, and it was discovered by an Egyptian archaeologist named Kamal al Malak in the year 1954. Now this was hidden with other grave goods, as they were called. Egyptians had collected these things and they were used for the afterlife. Now this boat vessel was reconstructed using cedar wood from Lebanon and is currently on display in the Geezer Solar Boat Museum. Now the Khufu ship is one of the oldest, largest and best preserved vessels from ancient times. The measurements of this, well, it measures 43.6 meters, which is 143 feet long, and 5.9 meters or 19.5 feet wide. Pretty big boat. Continuing to number six, we have the tomb KV 
1995. In 1995, excavations at KV5 revealed that the little studied tomb was actually the largest ever constructed in the Valley of the Kings. So as excavation continued, reports suggested that archaeologists had found 121 corridors and chambers in the tomb. And the researchers said that they think more than 150 will eventually be found. Archaeologists found that the tomb was used to bury the sons of Pharaoh, Ramses II, who we'll talk about later on in this episode, as a matter of fact. And at least six royal sons are known to be placed in KV-5. So we reach half Halfway in this episode. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. And if you are, be sure to check out our other related video. It's about the 10 biggest lies about Egypt. Very, very interesting episode. You might have a good laugh in that video as well. I'll link to it below in the video description section. Definitely check it out after you finish watching this one. It's a really, really, really good episode. One of my favorites, actually. Continuing now to number five. This discovery is the Bastet Temple. Now this 2,200 year old temple is believed to have been dedicated to an ancient Egyptian cat goddess named Bastet. And this was discovered in Alexandria, Egypt. Mohammed Abdel Maksud, which is the Egyptian archeologist who led the excavation team, he said that this discovery may be the first trace of the long sought location of Alexandria's royal quarter. And because of the large number of statues depicting Bastet that were found in the ruins, he said that it suggests that this may be the first Ptolemaic era temple dedicated to the cat goddess to be discovered in Alexandria. So yep, there could be several more. Now this would indicate that the worship of an ancient Egyptian deity actually continued during the later years when the Greek had a lot of influence in Egypt during the Ptolemaic period. Next up at number four, we have the Valley of the Golden Mummies. This is a very interesting one. So after intensive excavations were going down, Egyptian archaeologists, they released some details of what is described as one of the most spectacular discoveries in Egypt in recent decades. Never before have such a number of mummies been found in a single site in Egypt. And those are the words by Dr. Zahi Hawass, who is the director of the Baharia Excavations, and he said this in an interview. Now, in some of the tombs that were explored, archaeologists, they counted over a hundred mummies of men, children and women. They say that entire families actually appeared together and some of the bodies were wrapped in plain linen, but others were decorated with masks and painted scenes of cartonage, which is made of linen and papyrus that served as a mummy case. But they said that no two mummy decorations were the exact same. And I guess there's no indication as to why some of them were covered in just plain linen while others had decorated designs on them. Number three leads us to the Silver King. In the year 1939, archeologist Pierre Montet, he discovered the tomb of Susanis I, who was a pharaoh who ruled Egypt around 3,000 years ago. And his burial chamber was located in Tanis, which is a city on the Nile Delta. This particular pharaoh was buried in a coffin that was made of silver, and he was wearing a golden burial mask. Now, Susanese the I is sometimes called the Silver King because of his silver coffin. Susanese I, he was a chief priest of the sun god Amun-Ra at Tanis, and his family lineage can be traced back to the great pharaoh Ramses the first. And by the way, Susanese, if you're wondering, that name there, it means the star appearing in the city. Getting down to the last two discoveries. Coming in at number two, we have the Pyramid Town at Giza. Since the year 1988, there's a team of archaeologists from the AERA, or the Ancient Egyptian Research Associates, and they've been excavating a town near the Pyramid of Mankara on the Giza Plateau. And this pyramid for the Pharaoh Mankara, who reigned from roughly the years 2490 BC to 2472 BC was the last of the pyramids constructed at Giza. And the people who lived at Giza would have actually been involved, heavily involved in building this pyramid. The discoveries made at this town include barracks for soldiers, as well as a giant house for senior officials, and also 
a discovery was made of a port that was used to import goods. These discoveries provide a lot of information about the people who built the pyramids, as well as the logistics and the thought process behind pyramid construction. Even details of what the people were fed during the construction of the pyramid. So a whole lot of information came out of this. And as you can imagine, a whole new world of discovery and research opened up. And the final discovery I'm going to share in this episode is the discovery of Ramses II. He was the third king of the 19th dynasty that reigned between the years 1292 and 1190 BC of the ancient Egyptians who reigned from 1279 to 13 BC. And that, by the way, was the second longest ruling dynasty in Egyptian history. Ramses II was known for his extensive building programs and initiatives and for many of the massive statues of him that were found all over Egypt. He's probably one of the most widely known pharaohs, even to people who aren't even interested in learning about ancient Egypt. Either way though, the tomb is not the longest tomb of any of the kings that were found in the Valley of the Kings, but it's probably the largest when it comes to area. It covers more than 820 square meters, which is 8,800 square feet. And by the way, one thing to mention was that uh, papyrus actually indicated that there was a robbery of Ramesses' tomb. And this dates back to the 28th year of the reign of Ramses III. Now, the mummy of Ramses II was not found in its tomb, though. It was first removed to the tomb of his father's KV-17 during ancient times, and then it was moved to Deir el-Bahari, where it was discovered in the year 1881. Pretty magnificent that the pharaoh wasn't even found in the tomb. Either way though, the identity of the pharaoh in the story of Moses and the Exodus recorded in the Bible and the Quran has been a subject of a lot of debate, but many scholars do accept that it was King Ramses II who ruled at that time. And that's what makes this discovery so surprising and amazing. That ends this episode on 10 surprising discoveries of ancient Egypt. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was really, really, really fun to research and, and, and look into. Definitely one of my favorite videos. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know by leaving a like. Also, if this is your first time here to FTD Facts, go ahead, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time we post a new video. This is a channel that we're dedicated to sharing facts and information about the different countries countries, cultures, people, and religions of our world. Until next time, guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon. Later.